Did you know that there are two completely different ways to use GarageBand right here on the iPad and the iPhone? Well, in this video, I'm gonna take you through both live loops and the track view so that you can understand the differences and work out which one of these versions you should be using to create music right here on your iPad or your iPhone. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And if like me, you like using GarageBand or you're just getting into GarageBand or you'd like to know how to use GarageBand, you might be a little bit intimidated when you first open the app because it just throws a whole lot of stuff at you at once. Well, I've got a whole bunch of videos that are going to help you learn how to use GarageBand to the best of your ability. And I focus a lot on the track view, but there's another view and another way that you can use GarageBand, which is the live loops view. And a lot of folks get stuck in one view and can't work out how to get back to the other and things are not looking the way that they should. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can select which view that we want to have and take you through some of the key differences between the two ways to use GarageBand here in iOS. Let's jump into the phone now and take a look. So when you open GarageBand for the first time or the hundredth time for that matter, you'll get a screen like this. And what you'll do is you'll go in and you'll tap on GarageBand, you'll tap on Create Document, and you'll be presented with a view like this. Now, what a lot of folks don't realize is that at the top here, we can select between two different modes. So here's our track view, which is a fairly standard mode that's been around for a long time. But a couple of years ago, Apple actually added in the Live Loops view. So if we tap on Live Loops at the top here, you'll get this sort of view where you can select from some preset loops, or you can create create your own loop grid and create music more of a DJ style. So in this video, I'm going to show you the two ways because a lot of folks actually ask me, how do I actually switch between or they might get stuck in one view and not go, know how to get back to the other view. So let's jump into the tracks view for starters and we'll record something really quick and then I'll show you how we can use both of the different modes together as well as switch between the two. So we'll jump into the keyboard here and start recording a track and then we'll go from there. Okay, we've got a bit of a bass sound here. So let's just record a couple of bars of bass and then just add in some audio recorder track just to get something happening here so I can show you the tracks view. There you go, not going to uh, worry too much about getting this perfect, but if we go back to tracks view, you can see here that we're starting to build out our track. So if we then tap on the plus button, and let's just grab our audio recorder now. So we'll slide across, we'll go audio recorder, and then just record a couple of bars of my voice over the top of this. So we go back to our track view, and here we go, we've got our bass and our vocal if we play that back. Do, 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 do. Now a lot of you are saying, yeah Pete, we understand this, but it is a pretty cool concept. The first time you start looking at multi-track recording and the ability that you can now build out up to 32 tracks and you can layer and overdub your different tracks with your virtual instrument, your own voice, your loops, then you can realize the power you have here in GarageBand. But there's a lot more to this because we talked before about the live loops view. So let's leave this tracks view for a moment and we'll tap here at the top and go back to my songs because what if we wanted to create something using the live loops grid. Well, to do that, we tap on create document, then we tap on the live loop. So now we can select from any of these presets or create our own. For the sake of this one, let's grab hip hop, shall we? We'll tap on hip hop and it's going to open up our hip hop live loops grid here ready to go. Now let's do the same thing. Let's record a little piece of audio using the live loops here. Now this isn't going to be a full tutorial on live loops. I have one of those in the works. So if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when that one is available if you wanna learn more about live loops. But the basics of live loops is that we can tap on any of the loops here in the grid. And you'll notice here on the left here, these are all different instruments or different sounds that we have. And then a whole bunch of different loops for those particular instruments. So we'll just slide that one away carefully. Uh, so if we tap on any one of these like this, And if we tap again, it will stop. And the beauty part of Live Loops is that it lines everything up to one bar. So you can't really go wrong. Things won't be out of sync if you tap on them too early or too late. So your timing's not that important. So what we're gonna do here is let's just record. The, oh, the other thing we can do with Live Loops is you can tap on one of these arrows and you can play an entire column of loops which can create some cool sounds. And we'll do that actually in this demonstration. So I'm gonna hit record. I'm just gonna record a few bars using the Live Loops grid. And then we'll show you how we can do some things between Live Loops and tracks. Let's go now. Okay, hit 
stop. We'll hit stop there. Uh, as you can see, I'm not very proficient in live loops. I don't use it an awful lot. So that is recorded now. We've done that. We can then go and record more. We can change the loops. We can do a whole bunch of cool stuff. But you'll notice here that we now have the tracks icon in the top left corner here in four from the left. If we tap on that, we come back to our track view. Now this should look pretty familiar because this is what we were just seeing in our other view. This is our regular track view. So what we can do now is we can come in here. We can edit any of these just like we would in track view. We can cut, paste, copy, edit our MIDI notes if it's a MIDI track, move our loops around, do whatever we want to do. And I've got a heap of videos all about how to mix and edit songs here in GarageBand, which you can check out in the links down below in the channel. But what I wanted to show here is that we can actually now mix and match. So you'll see at the top here, we can go back to our grid view by tapping there, back to live loops, and then we can go back to our track view. So we can add more loops, but we can also add some recording. So if I wanted to be brave, and let's just have a listen to this. So if I wanted to add some vocals to this, I can actually now tap on the add here and just come into a standard audio recorder track. And now I can record this over the top of these loops, just like I was using track view. So let's hit record and record something here. There you go. Wow, that was embarrassing, but uh, luckily no one will ever hear it. So now when we play back, you'll hear my vocals over the top of these live loops. Yeah, we're kicking it with some live loops. We've got our track view going on. We are going for it. Wow, that was just the worst ever. Anyway, I hope you've had that uh, enjoyable because, uh, yeah, I like to embarrass myself sometimes. Anyway, we're going to go back here and we'll, what we'll do now, so, sorry, let's just summarize that. So we've got uh, our live loops that we can come in here and then if we go back to our live loop view, you'll notice that we can't actually see the track that we've just recorded there unless we're in track view. So just keep that in mind. It can get a little bit confusing between the two. Uh, but yeah, it's a good way to get some good variety between your live loops and your track view. And there's other ways you can do things here. But for now, that's just what I wanted to show. So we can move between the two modes like that. Now, what about if we're in track view and we want to get to live loops view? Well, let's go back to that original track we recorded. So we'll come back out. We'll go into this track here. And now, what we can do to actually go to live loops mode on this track is tap in the top left here where we've got our audio selector, so our instrument selector, and then tap on live loops. And now if we choose one of these, let's just go, uh, we'll go our, no, let's go hip hop again, uh, and we'll bring up our hip hop grid. So now we've got the same sort of thing here. If we hit play, do, 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 do. there is those tracks that we recorded before. But now what we can actually do is we can do the reverse. We can layer over some loops onto our track. So let's just do that now. Let's just sort of hit a couple of these drum tracks and see if we can get something that sounds cool with our loop here. We'll hit record. Okay, so maybe it doesn't match up perfectly. I didn't really do a hip hop uh, beat in my original one, but you can see what we can do here. So now if we go back to our track view, there we go. We've now got our new tracks here that have been added using live loops, and then we've got our original tracks there. And if we play back from the track view, and now what we can do is we can edit and we can do whatever manipulation we need. So there you go. You can see that, and sorry, the one last thing is if we want to go back, we can just select there. So we've always got the ability to switch between tracks and live loops view, but you won't get that until you've done that first combination. So you've come in here and you've gone to live loops or you've gone to tracks from the other view and you've got a recording in there. So hopefully that helps you out and shows you the difference between live loops and track view, but also how we can actually combine them and take the best of both modes and bring them together to make your tracks here in GarageBand even better. And there you have it, one app, but two very cool ways to access our loops and our instruments and to create music right here in GarageBand. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey,